Hello my YouTube friends and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be upgrading my Kev Q350s in the hopes of making them sound better. If you saw my look inside video on these speakers then you probably know that the crossover and cabinet could use a little love. So today I'm going to measure the cabinet for any cabinet resonances that are taking place and then try and rectify them. And then next I'll focus my attention on the crossover and replace the low quality parts with higher quality parts. So let's get started. The first thing I want to tackle is the cabinet. As you can see from these clips that I took from my look inside video, the cabinet is pretty bare and has very little damping material. Kef did include two bunched up rolls of damping material that are strategically placed within the cabinet, but that's pretty much it. Because of the lack of damping material, I'm sure some cabinet resonances are taking place. So let's find out. Before I get into testing the cabinet, I wanted to show you the spectral decay plot that Stereophile did on the Kef Q350 to see if it matches with my measurements. So what is spectral decay? Cumulative spectral decay, or CSD, gives a detailed analysis of a loudspeaker's resonances. As you can see from the spectral decay plot that Stereophile did on the Q350, there are several resonances showing up. One at around 300 Hz, and another between 6 and 700 Hz. Now let's see if the measurements I take from my trusty Dayton Audio Dats V3 line up with their measurements. The first graph I'm showing you is the impedance sweep from my CAF Q350 driver in free air. I'm showing you this graph to point out that the Q350 woofer does have some driver resonances between 140Hz and 200Hz. There is nothing I can do about these driver resonances, but we'll need to take them into account when we measure the driver inside the cabinet. Here's the impedance sweep from my CAF Q350 speaker. As you can see, there are some cabinet resonances that are taking place, and I have circled them in yellow. These resonances line up with the spectral decay plot that Stereophile performed on the Q350. The resonances that I circled in red are caused by the driver and not the cabinet, and there is nothing I can do about them. I'm hoping by adding some additional damping material and sound deadening material to the inside walls of the cabinet that it will resolve two problems. The cabinet resonances that are taking place and the somewhat boxy sound that I am hearing. I think the boxy sound is caused by the lack of sufficient damping material inside the cabinet. By adding damping material, the sound waves radiating from the back of the driver will be absorbed instead of being free to bounce around and excite the cabinet. So you're probably wondering what products I'm going to use to combat that cabinet resonances that I saw uh, in the impedance suite. Well, there's two products I'm going to be using. One of them is from Amazon Basics. This is a sound deadening material. And it's got like a, you know, a sticky back on it and you can apply it. But I really want good adhesion. So I'm actually going to be using this 3M Super 77. I'll be spraying it on the back side and then applying it to the cabinet walls. And then once that is all dry, I'm going to be using a product from a company called Sonic Barrier. This is their one inch foam damping material that I'll be applying to uh, most of the side walls, not all of them. And I'm hoping by applying these two products that it should take care of those cabinet resonances that I was uh, seeing in the impedance suite. So I'm gonna get going on it and we're gonna find out if this stuff really works. Here I'm cutting the sound deadening material to size and fitting it to the inside of the cabinet. Even though the sound deadening material does have a peel and stick backing, I wanna make sure I have good adhesion and we'll be spraying 3M Super 77 on the back side to secure it to the cabinet walls. Here is the finished cabinet after I installed the sound deadening material. I only applied this product to the top and two side cabinet walls. Even though this stuff is pretty thin, I still want to be mindful about the amount of internal volume that I'm consuming with these products. If the internal volume of the cabinet shrinks too much, it could have a negative effect on base alignment, which I'm trying to avoid. 
Here I'm using a Dremel tool to chamfer the inside of the hole for the woofer. By doing this, it will help prevent unwanted reflections and diffractions of sound waves coming from the speaker, potentially improving clarity. I figured this is a free upgrade since I already have the tool, so might as well give it a try. Here I'm cutting the sonic barrier to fit inside the cabinet. This is a 3 quarter inch foam material that includes a peel and stick back to make installation easier. Once I have the pieces cut to size, it's just a matter of peeling off the back and positioning the pieces into place. Here's the cabinet after getting the 3 quarter inch foam material installed inside the cabinet. I only applied the foam to the two side cabinet walls and halfway up the rear cabinet wall. I had originally installed the foam on the base of the cabinet around the crossover, but was getting a standing wave during testing. I'll talk more about this later. The original crossover in the Q350 is our first order design in both the high and low pass filter. KEF is using a pretty nice polypropylene film capacitor on the tweeter circuit, and I doubt I'll see much, if any, benefits by swapping it out with something different, but I'm going to do it anyways in the name of anecdotal science. For the woofer circuit, KEF is using a pretty cheap iron core inductor. Iron core inductors cause saturation and distortion, which directly impact sound quality. By using an air core inductor, I can eliminate the effects of saturation because an air core inductor does not have a metal core to saturate. For this build, I'm not redesigning the crossover. I'm simply swapping out the low quality parts with higher quality parts to see what sonic benefits I can hear. The crossover went through several revisions because I wanted to try different things out. At first, I had installed Mundorf Evo caps as seen here. These didn't cost me anything because I had used them for another project, so I decided to give them a try. After getting them installed and doing some listening tests, something didn't sound quite right, so I took it all apart and realized I was using the wrong size capacitor. Oops. No wonder it didn't sound right. For the second revision, I ordered four Clarity Cap Copper Connect capacitors to use for the high pass filter. Clarity Cap doesn't offer a 4.4 microfarad capacitor, so I had to order two 2.2 microfarad capacitors for each speaker and then run them in parallel. I really like the Clarity Cap Copper Connect series. I think they offer great value for money when compared to some of the crazy expensive boutique capacitors. I have used these capacitors for several projects in the past and have always been really happy with them. After installing the new capacitors, I posted a picture of the upgrade I did to the crossover on my social media account. Some of you were quite surprised that I left the Sandcast resistor in place. The reason for this is in the past, I haven't really heard any sonic benefit in replacing them, and was also trying to keep the cost of parts down. But since I do have a nice wire-wound Mills resistor in the correct value, I might as well try it and install it to see if I hear any benefits. Here's the third revision of the crossover with the Mills resistor installed. These resistors are pretty expensive and will add another $18 to the parts list, so I'm hoping there is at least some type of sonic benefit with them. I also thought now would be a good time to replace the wire that goes from the terminal cup to the crossover board with Super Series speaker cable, which has a purity rating of 5N. I decided to solder the wires to the terminals instead of using push-on connections. I'm a big believer that the best connector is no connector, so I try to solder the connections whenever I can. Now I'm going to install my new crossover and reassemble the speaker and see if all this hard work has paid off. Now let's see if all my hard work has paid off. Just to recap, here's the before picture showing the resonances taking place at 300 Hz and another between 6 and 700 Hz on a stock Q350 cabinet. After doing all the upgrades and performing the sweep again, I noticed I was getting a hump at the port tuning, which usually indicates a standing wave that is taking place. At the time of this sweep, I was also using sonic barrier at the base of the cabinet around the crossover. Because the crossover takes up so much space, I couldn't cover the entire base of the cabinet with foam damping material. Instead, I had to strategically place the foam around the crossover, which wasn't very effective. To rectify the standing wave that was taking place, I removed the foam material that I was using around the crossover and replaced it with 58 grams of polyfill. Using polyfill allows me to get much better coverage at the base of the cabinet where the crossover is located. After installing the polyfill, I reran the test again and it was perfect. The standing wave was no longer there at the port tuning and the resonances that were taking place are now gone. 
That would be a yes. In my opinion, there is a nice sound improvement with these upgrades. The biggest improvement I could hear is in the cabinet upgrades I performed, as well as replacing the iron core inductor on the low pass filter with an air core inductor. To me, the Q350 has always sounded a bit boxy. So what does that mean? What I mean by that is the walls of the speaker cabinet can vibrate excessively due to lack of damping material inside the cabinet. This creates unwanted resonances that color the sound, particularly in the low to mid frequencies. As you saw in the spectral decay graph from Stereophile, as well as from my own measurements, there is definitely an overemphasized sound coming from the low to mid frequencies, especially in the 300 Hz region and another between 6 and 700 Hz. This overemphasized sound in the low to mid frequencies is what's causing the muffled and somewhat hollow tone that I am hearing. By lining the inside walls with quality damping material, the boxy sound is now non-existent and the clarity from the speaker has improved dramatically. After each upgrade I did, I would compare the stock speaker to my modified speaker to see if I could hear any differences along the way, and this is what I found. There were some changes that were minor, and then there were some changes that were quite audible. In my opinion, the biggest sonic improvement came from lining the inside walls with damping material, as well as swapping out the iron core inductor with an air core inductor. These upgrades really improved the clarity from the speaker. Voices and musical instruments are more natural sounding and have better detail. The best analogy I can give is imagine talking but with your hands in front of your mouth. That would be the old speaker. Now remove your hands from your mouth and you will hear a dramatic improvement in clarity and sound. This would be the speaker with the upgrades. Some of the upgrades that weren't so dramatic would be upgrading the capacitors and resistors on the high pass filter. When I swapped in the Clarity Cap Copper Connect capacitors, I couldn't hear much, if any, difference to the stock capacitors. On some tracks, it sounded like the background ambient noises were brought more forward with the Clarity Caps, but I can't say for sure because during a blind listening test, my success rate in determining the differences was about 50-50. I wasn't surprised by this result because the original capacitor in the KEF Q350 is already pretty nice, but it was fun trying this test out anyways. The next thing I tried was installing the Mills resistor and then comparing it to the factory Sandcast resistor. During my listening test, it sounded like the speaker with the Mills resistor had a less grainy sound versus the one with the Sandcast resistor. In some tracks, it was easier to hear the differences than others. I did have a slightly better success rate picking out the differences between the factory speaker versus the speaker with the Mills resistor, but again, it wasn't absolute. In my opinion, if you wanted to do this upgrade with your Q350s, then I wouldn't waste my money on new capacitors for the high pass filter. Instead, I would focus on lining the inside of the cabinet with quality damping material and swapping out the iron core inductor with an air core inductor on the low pass filter. I think you'll get the most bang for your buck by doing these upgrades. At the time of this video, the damping material, sound deadening material, and air core inductors would set you back about $100. If you wanted to add the Mills resistors and clarity caps, then those parts will add another $72 to the parts list. It really boils down to how crazy you want to get with these upgrades. If you're an avid watcher of my channel, then you know I like to tinker with speakers and I'm positive that this video I did will bring out the keyboard critics, but I don't care. All that matters is, is I had fun doing this project and now my KEF Q350 sound a bit better after these upgrades. Hopefully, this video will inspire you to get out there and tinker with your speakers. The key is to have fun because you might be surprised by what you learn with trial and error. If you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that like button. So long and happy listening!